Good morning, everybody. We're going to uh, get started here shortly. Um, morning. Probably a couple more minutes. I just want to make sure that uh, uh, everybody has time to come in. One more minute, we'll get going. Okay, everybody, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining me this morning as we are kind of dialoguing a little bit about the instructional car new technology. Uh, I, want to, I think I'm gonna switch this over um, to the other computer. I have it currently connected to my laptop and for whatever reason, my laptop's causing a flickering and uh, I don't like that. So give me one quick second while I flip this over to the other computer real fast, if you can. Okay, so Okay, well, sorry about that. For whatever reason, the file is too large to be sending my other email. So we're just gonna kind of keep it up in here. Sorry for the flicker. It's probably something I'm gonna do with my laptop, but uh, we're gonna get started just cause I wanna take, uh, make sure that we get everybody uh, the information that they need in a, time, in a timely manner. So uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna ask for any kind of questions you guys might have to go ahead and put those in the chat. And then somewhere near the end, what I'm gonna end up doing is 
uh, kind of looking through those and doing my best to answer as much of those questions as I possibly can in a timely manner. This way, for the most part, most people can uh, get the information they need. And if they don't have any, have any questions, they can jump off and those that have questions can stick around while I answer those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of jump forward. There's, there's two cameras you'll notice in here. Uh, one is from the instructional card itself. That's this one here. And then I've set up a second one through uh, a different account of mine. Uh, just to kind of show some of the screen motions that I'll do, I'll do my best to try to zoom in so that you can take a peek and see how it all works uh, from the standpoint of an, of an over, over the shoulder observer. But let me go ahead and get started. We're just going to do a cursory overview of the cart and uh, dig down into how the touch panel works, uh, how some of the other components inside of the cart work, and uh, kind of go from there. So here we go. Uh, Looking at the cart as you're walking into a room, this is generally what you're gonna end up seeing uh, for a standardized room. And we'll talk first about the standardized room, then we'll dig into a little bit of the high flex rooms. So if you are if you walk into a high flex room, but you're, but you're teaching just a standard class that doesn't include any online or high flex instruction, uh, this is kind of more for you. So we're want, we wanna dig into that now. And then uh, the high flex stuff you'll, you'll start seeing as we're coming up. A couple of the main things that you're going to notice that are new on the carts are obviously the cubby over here on the left hand side that you're seeing and then the touch screen over here on the right hand side. Looking at the cubby uh, right now what you're what you're looking at for a lot of these is access to power so if you're bringing in your own uh, you know, laptop or some kind of device that you're wanting to plug into power charge your phone or whatever it is uh, you have access to that. Additionally, you're gonna have access to an HDMI connection. This uh, HDMI connection works into the system and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. This way you can plug in your laptop if needed and uh, or other device, whatever it is that might have that HDMI connection. Now, if your computer has something like a USB-C connection of some, some kind, you are gonna need a dongle. That'll be something that uh, you'll have to kind of carry around with you or get your hands on in some way. Uh, Media services doesn't provide that. A lot of things that we're trying to do for media services is, is to try to provide as much uh, equipment as we can, but particularly equipment that doesn't uh, walk away or have a chance of getting lost and all that kind of stuff. So uh, the, the, the HDMI to USB-C for some of those who might need it, um, that would be something that you'll want to pick up on. Additionally, not pictured here is the 3.5 insert for the Rode wireless microphone. I know that a number of people wanted to be able to integrate that much easier. Uh, and in fact, this cart has one. So if you're looking over here on this, uh, this other cart, I don't know if it can be seen or not. Uh, there we go. It's kind of hard to see. It's blurry for whatever reason. But um, the, the 3.5, uh, come here, you. There it is. The 3.5 jack, anyway, has, uh, is, the, is your ability to just plug straight into the system itself without having to do the workaround that we had come up with earlier in the year, wherein you would plug into the computer use, utilizing a dongle or whatnot. This, uh, this device here, you just plug your Rode microphone into that, make sure they're both powered on, uh, and then the students on the far side will be able to hear you. We're still working on making sure that those are set up so that the, uh, that vol um, the speaker volume coming through the room uh, or the room is able to hear you as well if you wanna do that and then have access to being able to control that volume. So we're still kind of working through a number of things here and there to make sure that this, uh, this system is completely capable of doing everything, or if not 90% of what, of what everybody's wanting to be able to utilize this for. So onto the touch screen. You notice over here on the right, for 99.9% .9 of instructors, you're going to be wanting to uh, click on the audio and video button. Uh, the big reason here is that that audio video button will fire up the projector, as well as the components uh, down below that uh, allow all of these specific video pieces to talk to one another. If you're finding that you're only going to be using, utilizing audio, let's say you've got a, you know, a work study class and you just want to play music through uh, you know Spotify or YouTube or whatnot, you can hit audio. It won't fire up all of those other things, but it will allow sound to come through the room. But again, 99.9%, .9%, I'm assuming, want that projector on. Uh, the amount of time that it's going to take to boot up is going to be solely dependent upon the projector in the room. Some of them take a little bit longer, some of them take a little bit shorter. Uh, so give that just you know the amount of time that you normally would uh, back when we had those touch button uh, 
you know, selectors takes takes the same amount of time. So we're going to look through here. We're gonna, first going to go up uh, up and down along the left hand side of this touch panel, and then we'll go across. The display power, this is the power that's directly related to your projector. I would highly encourage everybody just to leave this on at all times. Uh, main reason being is if for whatever reason you choose to turn it off, the, a lot of these projectors are, are lamp, uh, you know, have a lamp in them and they require uh, a specific period of time to cool before they're allowed to power back on again. And that's a massive headache for you as an instructor. Uh, even at the end of class, I would suggest you utilizing the power toggle, which we'll get to here in a minute, uh, but leave that, uh, that, that uh, projector uh, toggle on. Uh, we wanted to be able to give you as much control and an ability to control some specific things within the room as possible. So this is here if, if for whatever reason you feel like, oh, I, would, I need, just need to turn the projector off or whatever. But if you did need to do that, I would suggest that you would utilize the next toggle, which is the display mute. This toggle here is built so that you can tap that toggle. And when you do, the screen will go black, the projector will stay on, but this allows for you to be able to, if for whatever reason you have, let's say your PC connected, or your laptop connected, and you don't want students to see you rummaging through files as you're finding your presentation or what, whatever the case may be, you can hit display mute and it will black out the screen uh, while, while keeping the projector on. And then once you're done, you hit that display mute toggle again and the screen will fire back up again. Does that make sense? So coming up next is the audio settings. Audio settings are gonna be directly re related to the specific devices that we have across along the top there. Uh, right here within this instance, we have you know, five faders, each corresponding to a, a, a different piece of equipment here. So we have the PC, uh, you've got the laptop, document camera has no volume, but we kept it on there anyway, Apple TV and the Blu-ray. Additionally, with, a, with one of our most recent firmwares, we've added a microphone uh, volume. And again, we're still, Kind of working on the configuration here, but when a microphone is plugged in, this will give you independent volume control of your specific microphone that you might be holding on or that you might have clipped onto you. We're still working on that. Uh, I promise we'll get we'll get it as soon as possible. Um, but again, so each one of these faders will correspond to each one of these specific devices that you might utilize for instruction. Same thing goes with video settings. Video settings here, this is the toggle that you'll choose in order to select the specific device that you want to use for instruction. So for example, if you're wanting to use PC, you're going to tap on PC. Right now, for, for example, I'm plugged in, I'm, uh, I've got my laptop uh, connected and that's what you're seeing. But if I were to go to PC, uh, it's going to change for the, the, stu the, the students on the far side in HyFlex, who you guys are at, at this point, uh, as well as for the students in the room. They're going to see that there. Document camera is the same way. You tap on that. Uh, Apple TV, you'll see as well. And we'll kind of dialogue a little bit what that, how that works later. And then uh, same thing here with uh, the Blu-ray. So all of these elements will be accessible via that uh, touch interface across the top. Some of these specific devices, let's kind of uh, circle through here and uh, catch up to what I'm saying through my slides here. Um, some of these specific devices have a control scheme uh, burned into them. So uh, Apple TV, for example, you can, you can utilize these buttons here, uh, directional buttons in order to navigate through Apple TV. Now, granted, uh, a majority of you are gonna do what I'm gonna end up displaying later. Hopefully that works out that you're just gonna end up mirroring your iPad and utilizing your iPad or your iDevice to share with uh, the students. Uh, you probably, uh, will not ever really need this on here, but we wanted to, again, give that control in case you needed to be able to uh, go through the, the Apple's uh, menu, uh, menu and kind of select something specific on there. Now, keep in mind, through with the rooms that do have the Apple TV up and running, we, you know, COS doesn't offer uh, you know, access to Netflix or Hulu or anything else like that. It is really just a home base. It's meant really more than anything else to be uh, a device that you mirror to, uh, but... Uh, from your mirrored device, you can utilize those tools that you might need to utilize uh, for showing whatever it is that you're wanting to show. Additionally, the Blu-ray also has a control scheme. This one also has been updated from what you're seeing on the screen. It's much more robust. We have the up, up down, left, right ar arrows. We have uh, enter key. We have a, a title menu. We have a back button, all of those kind of things. All of, the, all of this is built so that 
you can access different parts of your Blu-ray menu, uh, turn, turn on or off, um, you know, uh, uh, closed captioning or whatever it is that you might need subtitles uh, for that room. Uh, access a specific chapter instead of having to just press play or press forward or hope that you find the right spot. You should be able to do all of that through the new blue room menu. Again, this is the old one. I didn't get around to getting a picture in time, but the new one has uh, a much more robust uh, it, you know, toggling system in place. So uh, up in the top right hand corner here, you have this little question mark. If you were to tap on this question mark, now again, I didn't get around to getting the picture straight away. This is uh, an old extension number, but I do. We, we have updated that to include the help desk phone number, 559-737-6100. Uh, uh, and additionally, uh, along with all of this, you know, in this instruction, I know I'm going very quick, uh, but I wanna try to capitalize on as much time as possible. We are uh, including, there's gonna be like a little cheat sheet here uh, on the on the card itself, as well as a, a very thorough um, multi-page kind of walkthrough tucked over here inside the cart for you to be able to access. Um, and anyway, so yeah, the um, yeah, the, the, so so yeah, I, I, if you press that button, you'll see the the number to our help desk support and they'll be able to get you in contact with somebody who will be able to come out and help uh, that you through whatever kind of issue might, you might be having onto the cart itself. Finally, down here in the bottom right-hand corner um, is the power toggle. You're gonna go ahead and press that when you're at the end of your class and uh, you'll, you'll get a prompt just to make sure this it really was more of a safety feature than anything else in case you accidentally tap it in the middle of class uh, you didn't want the system to shut down on you. So this is set up here so that yes, no, go ahead and hit yes to shut down the class. I really want to encourage as many uh, instructors as possible to make sure that you're shutting down after every class. Main reason being is because there's a number of components in here uh, that will go to sleep. This will also shut down the projector. And, and that's really, really helpful for the life of these specific pieces of equipment. It's not enough just to hit display mute and walk out. It's not enough just to hit the display power and walk out. It would be really, really helpful for us for you to shut the system down. That way, those specific elements down below are allowed to get a little bit of rest before the next class starts uh, and they're not on all the time. I, I know that I have walked into a few rooms where uh, the morning in the same, you know, the next morning and it's been up and running all night long and it's not ideal. We just want to make sure that we're uh, allowing these things to get some rest so that that way they can last us as long as possible. So again, we're looking here uh, at the top of the card. A number of these uh, monitors within the system have access to uh, uh, USB ports on the side of the monitor. So this would be one of the ways in which you can access, uh, you know, if you have a thumb drive with your instructional materials on there, you can plug that in and that will connect to your workstation computer. So this way you can access, you can fire up your PowerPoint presentation or whatever file it, file it is that you're wanting to share with the students in the room. Oops. Additionally, down below, this is kind of something that I just wanted to, wanted to give you a look of what it looks like down below. But again, you, near the top, you have that Blu-ray player. The Blu-ray player will also play DVDs. It will also play CDs. So if you have those specific pieces of material, you'll be able to utilize all of those in there. Uh, the next thing down is the switching unit, which again is tied to the touchscreen up above. And then, oh, let me switch through this here. And then down in the bottom right hand corner is where the, usually where the Apple TV lives, um, if that room has that. So moving on to the iFlex, uh, Operational tutorial, I wanna uh, give a quick shout out to Ray Larson who helped uh, snap a few of these pictures and this, and I'm actually pulling from part of uh, the tutorial that he helped build. Um, so that way you can, you know, some of this stuff that you might see on a page is just kind of uh, tucked into the cart. But down below, you're gonna notice at least as it stands right now, again, we're dealing with things like uh, chip shortages and supply issues and all of that kind of stuff. Originally, the touchscreen monitor was meant to be an all-in-one computer. Um, but in order to get things up and running by this semester, we actually, the, they, they had back ordered those, uh, I think into March. So sometime next month, those will be switching out. But until then, we've added a, it's like just a microcomputer. So 
uh, if you come in, you find that the touch screen is not on, it's not responsive, it's more than likely that the computer was shut off. So you wanna make sure that you tap on that little power button right there in the corner. Uh, the, power, the computer underneath it is, go, is would be your workstation computer. This is a computer that's tied over here to what you utilize for instruction, accessing YouTube videos and PowerPoint. And it's essentially the computer that you would normally find in that room. That one also has a power icon uh, down below. You know, and those will be readily accessible uh, so that you can grab those and touch those if for whatever reason the power was shut off on that computer as well. Uh, in, in the same vein, uh, there was some ideas thrown around and there were great ideas. It's just, I'm, I've got to work to get, get around to them. The goal is to end up uh, you know, la labeling all of these so that they're very, very clearly stated, hey, this is your high flex computer, hey, this is your workstation computer. Um, and additionally, we're going to be tying like uh, color coded uh, stickers so that you know, oh, hey, this uh, this workstation computer is tied to this monitor and this uh, high, this small high flex computer is tied to the touch screen. Now, again, that's going to be changing once uh, some of that will be changing, at least once the um, the all in ones get in and those that kind of change happens. But I wanted to let you know that's where that's at. This is what the look of your HyFlex system is going to appear as you walk into a HyFlex room for those who are HyFlex instructors. You'll sign into your, your workstation computer um, uh, as, you know, as soon as you come into the room as normal, you'll utilize your, your keyboard and mouse in order to do that. And then you'll want to sign into your touchscreen computer, which is a HyFlex computer. And this one doesn't have a mouse, it doesn't have a keyboard. Uh, one of the big reasons why is as we were test bedding a lot of all of this kind of this stuff, we had it set up once where we had two separate computers and two separate mice and two separate uh, keyboards and one really, really frustrated uh, instructor because they kept going to the wrong thing and it was it made it a kind of a, a hectic uh, instructional time. So we felt like the smartest move at this point was let's make one of these touchscreen and let's make that the high flex or the digital student. Uh, that way you can kind of interface with them, uh, touch on that specific person to highlight them or mute and unmute them or whatever the case may be. Over here on the right, again, this is this will be the touchscreen computer. Uh, when you come into the room, if it's set at its home screen, you're going to go ahead and just swipe up from the bottom. When you swipe up from the bottom, you're going to get this, which is your, your user logon. Go ahead and tap on the username. And then uh, after you tap on the username, you'll be able to bring up this uh, touchscreen keyboard here, type in your credentials, uh, you know, uh, username and password in order to get in. Once you're in, if this is the first time that you're accessing this touchscreen computer or the HyFlex computer, I wanna encourage you to make sure that you're, you do one small setting change and that's this one here. So let me zoom in so that's making it a little bit easier. So for those of you who wanna be able to access this uh, other computer over here or this other camera or whatever it is, screen, so that you can better kind of see what's going on. Uh, and I know I'm sharing my screen, it's a little redundant, but I just wanted to kind of make sure that you see what's going on. You'll end up tapping here again on this, when the focus is just, Really obnoxious. Um, you'll tap here on this gear icon. And again, this is the first time that you're coming into this computer. It will be the only time that you need to do this, but this is just to activate the touchscreen keyboard to make sure that it's it's accessible at all other times that you're within, uh, within this specific computer. You're gonna to go to devices, you'll tap on devices. You're gonna tap on typing, and then you'll scroll down and down here, you're going to see a, a dialog box that says, show the touch keyboard when not in tablet mode, and there's no keyboard attached. You want to make sure that that is flipped to on. And then you can go ahead and close out of this window. Once you do that, you, uh, you essentially make it so that the keyboard will pop every, every single time that you would necessarily need to type for, in this a workspace on the HyFlex computer. And realistically, there's really only a couple of times, it's that very first time, and that one comes up all the time anyway, that first login. And then when you go to uh, utilize your uh, conference uh, application of choice, and, and this is since the Zoom, you'll, uh, you'll sign in as normal. And when you hit that, when you get that login screen, you can tap on the email. And again, the, the, uh, key, the touch keyboard will come up 
and you'll be able to touch uh, through your logon. Those are the only two logons that you'll need for this instruction. And again, if you're not utilizing this uh, instance of Zoom, let's say an app, you could also uh, go through Google or, or, or Edge or whatever it is and go to My Giant, uh, sign into your Canvas there and then uh, launch comp for Zoom from there. But again, that would be the only, that'd be the only instance where you would end up utilizing your, uh, needing to utilize this keyboard is just those two specific moments of signing on. And everything else, you shouldn't really need to be doing too much typing or, or uh, you know, utilizing text-based stuff on this computer. I know, I know some students have also, or will also utilize the chat like we have uh, here, but uh, you know, you might want to encourage them. Hey, for those of you who have questions in chat, I'll talk with you later, or I'll or I'll respond via voice, or whatever the case may be, or uh, or maybe open up something on uh, like an iPad or something like that, just so that you're not having to sit here and type in on this specific screen itself. Um, let me back out here. Uh, going on here with the with the sign on into Zoom, just so that you can see. What, uh, what some of the things that need to be done. We have access to, again, we'll, you'll join your meeting as normal or you'll go into your meetings up here and find the meeting that you have scheduled uh, and launch that. Uh, it's gonna, the di 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 dialog boxes are gonna kind of help walk us through it. You wanna join with computer audio. And now we have, uh, this is essentially what a, the, a Zoom function is setting up. I wanna show you how to share your screen with the students on the far side. Um, so you have the share icon, this is normal. You're gonna go ahead and click on, or tap on that share icon. Up here at the, near the top left-hand side, you're gonna see this advanced uh, bar up, up at the top, right there. You'll wanna to tap on that. And here you've got a parade of, uh, of a number of different options in which you can share. What we're aiming for here is the bottom left-hand corner, this content from second camera. This is what you want to be able to uh, share with students. And essentially what this is doing is this is pulling the signal from all of the equipment down below, and it allows you as the instructor to be able to uh, show the students uh, everything that is happening from, uh, via the touchscreen. So anything that's happening in the classroom that the students are seeing, if you're utilizing, if you switch from the PC to the laptop, to the document camera, Apple TV, Blu-ray, whatever it is, um, whatever you tap on there, the students in the in your classroom will see, and the students uh, in your HyFlex classroom will also see all of those things as well. In addition to that, they will still also have access to the um, the camera here that is set up for the room, so they'll have both what's being shown on the screen, as well as you know, a, a camera for, for viewing purposes. Uh, uh, just a couple of quick things that you'll wanna make sure, just quick settings you wanna make sure are connected correctly for, uh, for HyFlex. Down at the bottom, you'll notice the, the microphone. You wanna click on this carrot uh, right here on the left-hand side. And when you do that, you just wanna make sure here that the microphone is selected to echo canceling speakerphone, Logitech meetup speakerphone, uh, as it is right now. If if you are utilizing the the um, the the Rode microphone here, that as you plug in, you'll want to make sure that you're clicked on speakerphone, Zoom speakerphone. So uh, there is a, there is a differentiation there between those two specific things. So if you are just speaking without the microphone uh, that's clicked on, you're not using the Rode. You want to make sure that the Logitech is chosen. And then if you're utilizing the Rode microphone, you want to make sure that this the Zoom speakerphone is chosen. That way, the system knows where it's pulling its sound from. Uh, it's the same instance here for the, for the speaker. So this is for the students on the far side who are wanting to speak into the room or speak to you as the instructor. You can select here the Logitech meetup, this, uh, the Logitech camera here uh, it's, that uh, is over on the side. This device has a microphone built in, has a speaker built in. Uh, the, the speaker's decent, the microphone's okay. They, they all do a, a good job, but if you're wanting the, the, a student's voice to come out within the speakers of the room, again, you'll be choosing speakerphone, Zoom speakerphone. Um, 
So let me, I would love to zoom in, but I feel like it keeps getting super blurry. But again, it's the second one down there that you're gonna be choosing the Zoom speakerphone. That's the, that's, the, uh, that's the option that you want if you want the students' voices uh, when they're speaking to come through the room's speakers. Uh, finally, you know, one, one last thing to be thinking about too when you're when you are in Zoom, the Zoom session, you just want to make sure you'll tap uh, down and make sure that the video again, if there's a carrot right next to the video icon. Uh, if you tap on that, uh, you can go ahead and choose the Logitech meetup camera just to make sure that that camera is set up for the room. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a black screen and you'll probably be a little bit frustrated with that. So again, in a high flex situation, you're wanting, you, wanting to utilize the camera here, the Logitech camera. You'll make sure that you choose that within, within your uh, conference application of choice. So uh, just a, again, just another example here of, of how the students are seeing what you're seeing here. That's all I have for today. Uh, I do want to, uh, as far as uh, from the standpoint of a, um, of a, uh, uh, you know, a PowerPoint presentation, there is a couple of other things that I want to uh, highlight to you. I'm going to try to see if I can't get this uh, camera here to, to uh, focus a little bit better. Um, so let's take a look here real fast at the Apple TV function of uh, of what you what what you have access to, uh, you're going to go ahead and tap on the. Uh, let me let me move this camera here so that you can see everything that's going on. I don't I don't want everybody to be uh, lost here. So you would go into down here into this device. You're going to go ahead uh, and for those of you who are wondering what's going on, there is another camera in there with my name on it, and I have access to being able to zoom into something. So you'll want to look for that. You're gonna go ahead and tap on your Apple TV. And so right now, most of these rooms are set up. So that way you should be able to pull up, for example, let's just do this real quick look. Um, I'm gonna shift this over here, uh, like an, an eye device. So I have this, uh, this, uh, this device here. I'm just gonna swipe up to get myself in. Nobody look, nobody look. Um, if, for example, that you're wanting to share your device with the, um, with the screen, you're going to go ahead and pull down from the corner there on your iDevice. There's a small key here, and I'll try to zoom in so that you can see it a little bit better. There's a small picture-in-picture -picture looking key right here. You're going to press this, and this is going to bring up uh, a list of rooms that include the ones that are closest to you. And you'll go ahead and tap on that. It's going to give me a code, which you guys just saw on the, you know, the, on the sharing screen. It's gonna give you a code. You'll type that code into the, uh, into the iDevice, nine, three, two, six, and hit okay. And now you should be able to see that uh, I'm sharing my iDevice with you. And I'm able to kind of, I can open up, you know, like a, a PowerPoint presentation and hold my iDevice and just walk around the room and, uh, you know, kind of slide through that. I could bring up, uh, you know, if for whatever reason you, you had something on Netflix that you needed to show somebody, you could do that as well. Again, this is, these are gray areas. I don't, uh, you, you, I don't have to know what you do uh, or how you teach in your classroom. I'm not, I'm not telling you that you can, but I'm not telling you that you can't in a situation like that. But uh, yeah, you can, you can, you know, whatever it is, open up a calendar, show them, uh, open up your notes, show them. However, it is, if there's an application that you want your students to be to be utilizing for instruction, you can kind of uh, open up that app and show them kind of the sign up process or show them how that app specifically works for um, for for your instructional purposes. Um, I would suggest, uh, from the standpoint of an instructor, I would suggest that you set this up to be linked to the Apple TV prior to students coming into the room, just so that they don't necessarily see 
<laughs> um, that uh, that code that allows them to access and I or, you know the code that you saw over here you don't want them to see that there because that's definitely not an ideal thing for them to see because then they could potentially uh, you know show something on the screen that you don't want when you're done you'll go ahead uh, when you're done sharing here at this device you're going to go ahead and swipe down again from the corner and you'll just tap on this device there or that, that icon there and hit stop, stop mirroring. And then the mirroring has stopped. So again, looking back over here, we'll just kind of take a quick peek through the touch screen one last time, just so that everybody has an idea of what, 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 the, um, what the setup looks like. We have a PC, a PC access. Again, this is your workstation computer that's uh, housed there on the cart. You have access to your laptop, which we have you know, the PowerPoint presentation playing. We have the dock camera, which is telling everybody hello. The Apple TV, uh, which we just kind of did a, a tutorial of there. And then for the rooms that currently have Blu-ray, you'll be able to watch Fellowship of the Rings, which is really good. No, but, uh, but realistically, uh, a number of the rooms don't have the Blu-ray yet because these, again, uh, this is a shipping issue or, or a, a back order issue because of parts. So a number of them have been back ordered and we're supposed to be hopefully getting those to those as well within the next couple of months. And those will be installed into the room as soon as I have those so that you can begin to utilize that if need be. So I think those are the main points that I wanted to be able to share with everybody here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of take a peek at the chat, um, make sure that I'm not missing anything here. I'm gonna stop sharing real fast. Um, okay, I currently don't see any uh, questions or anything. Is there anybody who has any kind of questions that they wanna ask? Uh, you can either put it in chat or you can go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask, and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, what does the USB next to the HDMI cord do? That's a great question. This was an accident. <laughs> this was something that uh, in communication with our vendor who did the install, they uh, had misheard what I said and they installed this. So this leads to really nothing uh, as it stands right now. Um, it's meant to, it was meant to be a USB receptacle. So it was supposed to be a female USB here. So that way you could plug a dongle in but we found that uh, on the side of your monitor, we had that access as well as down below, you'll have access to your computer so that you can plug in there. So between those, you have access to six USB plug-in devices. And so we just felt like it was a bit gratuitous to add just an additional one here. So that's why we chose not to do that. But again, yeah, it's a, it was just a, uh, the, the vendor misheard what I was asking for. So will room Kawea 204A have this set up? So as it stands right now, there are currently 30 rooms that are set up uh, across campus. Uh, and not just this campus, this campus as well as there are three in Hanford and five in Tulare that are set up with the, the high flex operation. Uh, over this, com this coming summer, our goal is to install 25 additional high flex rooms, as well as we were going to be updating all uh, instructional carts to have uh, a lot of this new technology. It won't necessarily be high flex, but it will have the touchscreen uh, interface. It will have this cubby that includes the HDMI connection. <clears throat> It'll have an updated, uh, uh, a updated document camera and all of the projectors are getting updated to laser projectors. So they're all going to be significantly brighter and clearer and easier to see in those rooms. Now, as far as Kawea 204A, I'll have to take a look at my, um, my, my cheat sheet that shows which rooms we're planning on doing for uh, the high flex upgrades. And uh, I will, I'll send you an email and let you know in fact, I can, if you want, if you guys want, I can go ahead and send an email to everybody who is here to let you know which, where the, the upgraded, uh, upgraded rooms are going to be. So 
Christopher Goodenow has kind of three years before our working because there are many USB pass through. Is that something we should put a help desk? In? Uh, yes, go ahead and put a help desk ticket in there for uh, for that. Uh, I will say this, and I'm, I'm trying my hardest not to make this sound like an excuse, but media services is a single person, right? Currently, as, as it stands right now. Um, and uh, I'm trying my hardest to get around to as many of the rooms as possible to make sure that they are all exactly the same or as much as exactly as possible. Uh, I know the number of rooms are set have a different configuration a different setup and so the goal here isn't to make isn't to standardize the way that you guys instruct it's to standardize the technology so that way you can very easily walk from a room in Tulare to a room in Visalia and all of the carts are functionally the same. So this way, instruction for you is so much easier. It's, it's, out, it's without the headache of wondering whether or not you have to, uh, you know, go to the document camera to switch between devices, or you know, is it the button up here, or does my blue, or does my DVD player even work, or you know, the VHS is stuck and I have no idea what I'm doing. All of that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, and Luann just answered my question. Thank you, Luann. I appreciate you uh, checking up on that for me. So yeah. Quia 204 was not submitted as a high flex, so Quia 205 was submitted for high flex um, for, um, for everybody. Is anybody else with any other questions? Oh, um, there's a couple of things that you'll you'll want to uh, bear in mind, and these are things that we're currently working on trying to figure out how best to set this up. Uh, for instructors who are wanting to do things like um, allow a, a distant student, your high flex student, to give a presentation in the room. Let's say it's a presentation day and they were supposed to be presenting, but they got COVID and all that kind of stuff. The, we currently don't have a workaround to share the high flex computer on the screen in the room. Uh, but uh, we, I don't say, I don't want to say we don't have a workaround. We do have a workaround. We just don't currently have the ability to uh, press toggle a button that will allow the high flex computer to be shared in the room. Uh, some of that was, you know, we're kind of trying to deal with uh, gray areas of privacy, uh, showing uh, a number of people in the room, a single person's, you know, what's going on behind them. Wasn't really sure what that what that what that looked like as far as uh, you know, privacy issues and all that kind of stuff. But if you need that student to be able to show. Uh, a presentation, your distant student to show a presentation, the best workaround is to uh, bring up an instance of, you know, either Zoom or Teams on your iDevice or on the second computer or on your workstation computer, you would just open up that, uh, uh, you know, an inst that instance of Zoom again and share that to the room uh, utilizing the, the touch computer down below. Now, I'm currently in conversations with our vendor about figuring out ways in which we can uh, do some uh, wiring and try to set up so that we can allow for the, the high flex computer to be shared to the um, to the projector in the room. But I can't make massive promises because he's still trying to figure out, okay, are, can we do this? Can we shift this around and all that kind of stuff? But as it stands right now, the, the, um, the easiest <laughs> workaround is bringing up a second instance of Zoom on like say your workstation computer that would have, that you would share that specific student uh, by clicking on, you know, PC down here on your touch panel. And now your, your PC will be sharing uh, that instance of Zoom with the student on there being able to give their speech. I hope that makes sense. I know it's mildly confusing and I apologize for that, but it was just something that we, you know, apart from worrying about uh, privacy issues and all that kind of stuff, it was, it was just something that we were like, oh no, we got to figure out a way to make figure out a way to make this happen. So that workaround is currently the best way of doing that. So, uh, is there a camera to show the whiteboard for those who prefer teaching using the whiteboard? Again, this is something else we're dialoguing about. We we uh, in building these and kind of testing test bedding them, we want to try to see if we could find a way in which to. Um, make everything self-sufficient all on the same cart so that way uh, you know a camera doesn't get tipped over on accident or, or you're not we're, we're not dealing with cables all over the place we're trying to make it as clean as possible but there is some conversation happening about either uh, finding another location for this camera specifically for those rooms wherein uh, a lot of teachers are utilizing the whiteboard for their instruction uh, and then additionally just trying to encourage people and, I, and, and again my goal here isn't to tell you how to teach because you are the you are the teachers but uh, you know 
in the in the in the meantime try utilizing things like the the document camera or you know connecting an i device and using like the draw feature on there in order to to do that and again i know that's a headache and i know i've talked with a number of instructors who are like the whiteboard's my jam that's that's how i instruct and i totally hear that and i totally get that and i want to i want you to know that so we're trying to figure out ways in which we can uh, be accommodating to that as well uh, this room doesn't for whatever reason doesn't have the um the there's a remote that goes to the uh the the camera that allows for a zoom in as well as it allows the camera to pivot uh and so you could potentially zoom in here to the whiteboard for whatever reason this one's missing and it bodes to the my big fear of watching uh con, you know remotes and controllers uh grow legs and walk away but uh but again uh, and I'll try to have to probably have to order a new one for this room. But that, uh, besides the point, there's meant to be a controller in here that will allow you to have some access to control for the webcam. So it's not always this wide. You can actually make it closer. You can zoom in quite a bit. Uh, and additionally, you can move that camera a bit more. You can also move it on the stand itself. Say you're wanting to do like a, you know, a wider room discussion. You can set that up just by kind of pivoting there as well as additionally using that remote that's found on all of those rooms, except for this one. So, so John, I hope that answered your question. I know it's not the favorite thing to hear right now, but we are working on trying to find a way to make that happen. So Christopher's got an option. He says, uh, I'm using Zoom on my laptop question um, and plugging directly into the projector so that the students uh, in my room can see students on Zoom. Is that currently the best way to bring Zoomers into the room? So let me read that question one more time I'm using Zoom on my laptop, plugging directly into the projector. So the students in the room can see the students on Zoom. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that would be a that would be a good option um, uh, uh, to be able to set that up as a, as a secondary. So essentially, what Chris is doing is he has his workstation computer here. He's utilizing his workstation for displaying things like PowerPoint presentations or whatnot. But then he also has his laptop that he's set up on a Zoom function, and then he's just sharing his laptop screen by pressing the the uh, the laptop icon, and that shares. Uh, to the far side. That's that's actually a, a great idea, Chris. I think that's that's definitely a good option for sharing to the room. Again, uh, I uh, as far as legal stuff, I know nothing about it. I'm just saying as there's definitely some gray areas that we're walking into when it comes to uh, sharing things like Apple TV across uh, online and the Blu-ray across online. Uh, I think that we're able to kind of tiptoe around that because we're, in, we're an educational system. And, and in that same vein, just trying to be very careful about uh, sharing, uh, you know, a Zoom session for a large, uh, you know, a large room of people to be able to see a single person's, uh, like essentially their living space. Um, again, I, I, I I don't know what that looks like, um, but I'm going to say not this nor that, but either way, I would, uh, I think that's, Chris, I think that's a great idea uh, in order to be able to allow students on Zoom to be able to give a presentation that everybody can hear. It's probably a smart way of doing it. Um, Courtney says, did we lose it? Was it, uh, it was there this morning or there yesterday morning. Uh, you'll have to clarify there, Courtney, for, for me. What, what uh, was it the, um, oh, the remote. So uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm currently in JM 101. Uh, so if it's not here, I mean, if if I don't see, it, I'll have to do some digging around. I'm, I'm a guy, so uh, like my wife even gets on to me. Hey, babe, where's the sodas? And she like walks over to the fridge, and there it is. So um, so as far as this room goes, I'll have to do some digging around to make sure I didn't 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 not see it. But oh, okay, 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 Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. He's using your laptop for everything, and then and then just sharing the power PowerPoint and everything from there. Yeah, I mean that would work. Again, the the whole premise behind. I mean, and that works great in an, in an instance where you're just wanting to uh, do everything from a single computer, which is totally doable. But the whole premise behind the uh, this building the high flex room was so that 
uh, all of the students who are you know, cur currently uh, at home because of uh, whatever issue that might be uh, arising, they have access to the different components that this, the rooms and the students have access to, like the document camera or you know, a Blu-ray if you're showing a clip from a movie or whatever the case may be. So I know that you know, it might feel like it's a lot of extra work for what is essentially a screen sharing, but if you find that your instructor who all you really do is share your screen and you don't use the document camera, you're not ever gonna, you're gonna pull up all your videos on YouTube as opposed to using a Blu-ray or whatever, um, then yeah, I mean, continue to do that. If that's your jam and that's how it works for you, uh, I would encourage that. But the whole, the, the whole working of the system was built so that whatever is presented on the projector for the students in the classroom is also projected for the students who are uh, at home uh, taking the class from there. So, oh, you wanna, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm in 101. I originally had it set up in 501 uh, and then I left to go get something and I came back and there was a class in there. So I had to grab all my stuff and run over here to 101. It was a really fun morning, kind of scary. Uh, John, uh, one laptop on the table in front of the whiteboard. The camera captures the whiteboard fumbling with all these logins and stuff. Is it wastes a ton of time in class. I understand that. Uh, I, you know, this is again one of the reasons why we were wanting to set it up so that you only had to log in twice. And I, and I know, I trust me, I know I've logged in. I feel like a hundred times on the touch screen. So I already feel your pain there. And my hope is that the the, the touch screen all in one is a little bit more easy to uh, to um, to navigate as far as touch capabilities go. Um, it's just one of those things where as we're stepping into this realm of high flex instruction, uh, you'll wanna choose to give yourself an extra five minutes to come into the room to make sure that all those elements are logged on. And again, I know you guys as instructors, your chief concern is making sure that the students uh, are learning and you're being able to share that, 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 uh, that knowledge and all that kind of stuff. And you don't wanna be monkeying around with all these other things. Uh, and I, I appreciate the, the, that you guys are willing to do that uh, in order to be able to share to the students uh, who are on the far side. Hopefully, um, you know, sometime next year, <laughs> who knows, uh, we'll be laughing about COVID and we'll be, uh, you know, I don't say laughing about it, but you know what I'm saying? We'll be looking back at this and going, hey, you know, we don't really need this equipment all that much anymore because there's only one, two, one student or two students who are out on, uh, on any given specific period of time and has nothing to do with any kind of sickness or whatnot. Uh, but again, that, what that allows for us is, uh, you know, in those high flex rooms, if you do have a student who's out on, let's say, maternity leave or out taking care of a sick kid or a sick parent, um, they can still be a part of class. They can still be a part of what's going on even after, you know, uh, COVID might potentially be over with. That makes sense. So, Dave, is, a, is it possible to set up where logging into the main computer logs into the touch screen to speed up a little bit? That's a great question, David. I, I'll have to talk to computer services about that. I don't think so, only because they're essentially set up as two separate computers. But uh, I know all that there is to know about projectors and all of that kind of stuff. But I don't really, I mean, there, 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 is a, there could be a possibility, maybe. We would just have to take a look at, um, um, I'll, I'll talk with computer services. Maybe there's an option of, of us figuring out a way to make that happen. So that's not a bad idea at all. Christopher, uh, if evening teachers need support during class time, what options do we have? Currently, we don't have anything, any support at nighttime for, for the uh, instructional cards. It's just throwing in a ticket. And the first thing in the morning, I'm coming over again. I'm a single person uh, doing this. We've, we're, we've just hired somebody else to be a part of media services. So there's a possibility that we'll have some form of evening support in the future, but I I can't make any massive promises there because this is largely dependent upon approval from deans and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, but as it stands right now, Christopher, I think the best bet is tossing in a ticket and the next first thing next morning, we'll take a look at it uh, and make sure that it's up and running the way that it should be. I'm sorry for that. It's kind of a bummer right now. Anybody else with any questions? Okay, so for those of you who need a bail, go ahead and bail. If you, if you have any other questions, I'll probably leave this chat open for a little bit longer uh, just to answer whatever needs to be answered. Uh, but I appreciate everybody's time. I'm going to uh, be offering this course again, probably here in, in another couple of weeks. Uh, and I'll do my best to update the pictures and make it a little bit smoother and a little bit shorter if I can. And so if you need a refresher, or if you want to uh, encourage one of your uh, you know, colleagues to come and be a part of it, that would be amazing. Um, 
uh, Courtney, was there a sign-up sheet? There's no sign-up sheet. So I'm, uh, because there's, I want to say so few, there's only 20 people. So I'm going to write, write everybody's name down. And uh, for everybody who's wanting flex credit, I'm writing everybody's name down. I'll be sending that over. So uh, oh, Luann has everyone. Thanks so much, Luann. So much help. So, so helpful. Uh, I, I do want to give a quick shout out to the provosts and the deans and all these people who have had uh, have been a part of like the high flex committee and helping to make decisions and helping to get this stuff pushed out there. They've been invaluable uh, as far as their ideas and their opinions and different things and ways, ways, ways which, which we have uh, been able to accomplish a lot of this stuff. So a massive shout out to all those people who've been super helpful in that way. Anyway, uh, I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, again, I'm going to keep this open for another few minutes. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, uh, ask and I'll do what I my best to answer. Thanks everybody. Thanks Charles. John, sometimes in the morning the PC with the mouse is turned off. The screen is black. How do I turn that? How do I turn it on when that happens? So uh, down below you should have access to uh, there's two computers and let me see if I can't let me share my screen again. Let me show you real fast. Um, and get back here to this um, real fast. Let me come back here. I just want I just want you to be able to see it uh, as clear as I can make it. So that, I know it's a little confusing now, and hopefully it will be less confusing when the all-in-ones uh, come in. But because uh, then you'll only have one computer down below. Currently, there's two computers down below. And right now, it's set up so this top computer here, the little micro computer, that's, those are set up for the high flux for most of the rooms. And then the larger kind of tower is set up as your workstation computer. And you'll notice here that Ray had circled this uh, power icon on this microcomputer to turn on, and that leads to the high flex. Over here in the bottom right-hand corner, there's uh, another power icon that looks the same, but it's just on that small tower. That's how you would turn on the power for the workstation computer. I think that's what you're talking about is the one with the mouse. So sometimes uh, instructors at the end of the day, they'll turn off the power. Um, some will just log out and either one's fine. Uh, uh, the computers are meant to go to sleep. So even if you leave them on, they'll end up going to sleep and then you can kind of shake the mouse to wake them back up. But if they don't, if they don't wake up when you shake the mouse, you're, uh, yeah, th then it just means that somebody shut down the power on that computer. So you can go ahead and press that button right there. And, um, and you'll have access to, or that, that should turn the computer on. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, 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 two, yeah, two, <laughs> two power buttons. Again, I know it's confusing and it's largely because the touchscreen was meant to be an all-in-one. So, you know, the power button for the touchscreen would be back behind it. Uh, and then down below would be only the tower for your workstation computer. So it's easier to kind of differentiate the two. But as it stands right now, this is kind of the, the setup of the workaround that we had to do uh, for it. When those touch screen all in ones come in, which we do have an order, and they should be coming, you'll, I'll trade those out. And then that will help to alleviate a little bit more confusion because the only thing down there will be the computer for your workstation. So any other questions? Feel free to ask. I, I love answering questions, even if they're hard ones, because you know it helps us make the system better. Hey, Aaron and Ray, since you're on here, um, yeah. asking about, so I see Matt Beret is still on here. So we had the one room with the, um, Matt, the um, one room that we were having trouble with, Matt, has that, that had help desk that was in, is that working now? Yes, Ray got it to work. Okay, okay. thank you. I, I'm in the room now trying to get the Apple TV to work and it's not working, but. Okay. Thank you. Ray, Ray make sure that, the, that we've changed that. I thought we went through and changed the uh, sleep function on those because it could be that it just fell asleep and it turned itself off. So uh, make sure that those sleep functions are changed to never. That way they're, that way they're, they're set, it's set to being on. And that way, whenever the instructor comes in and presses the Apple TV, uh, if you can't find it right, just let me know and I'll swing by and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it together. Uh, yeah, John. I, 
I already told ahead. Matt I was going to go check that settings because it was on yesterday afternoon because I had to rename that the Apple TV for some reason. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's back to the weird name. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I already mentioned it to Greg yesterday. Okay. Something in Jamf is resetting the Apple TVs, I think. And so okay. all of the, I'm surprised yours still says JM 101 on it. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised myself knowing that. We'll have to take a look at Jamf and make sure that it's not doing like a reboot for whatever reason on these. It could be because we had, uh, had to upgrade or, or whatnot for more devices. I, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, it shows that it was only doing an inventory update, and we're not sure why that would do it. Greg said he was going to look into it. So unfortunately, yeah, that bug number 532. <laughs> right, I know that feeling. Hey, John, let me, uh, let me, I'm going to back this up real fast. I'm going to show you on the touch screen how, how, that, how to bring up that, bring up that touch screen. I, I appreciate your questions big time because that definitely helps here. Let me. Trying to make sure that I, it's going to be a little bit hard to see because I got to zoom in here. So for the, for the keyboard real fast, uh, and we kind of mentioned a little bit about this earlier on, but I'll kind of go, I want to go through it again just to make sure it's clear. So the very first time that you log on to a high flex computer, this is something that you're going to have to do. Once you log on to it and, and change this setting, you won't have to do it again, but you're going to hit the, map, the, the Apple icon. Uh, and then you're going to touch the gear icon here, which leads to settings. Uh, within the settings window, you're going to go to devices, which is up here at the top. Along the left-hand side here, you're going to see a number of options. You want to go to typing. And then uh, you'll be able to kind of, I uh, say scroll, but, you know, uh, touch to move this down um, to this uh, area called touch keyboard. And at the bottom here, it says show touch keyboard when not in tablet mode and there's no keyboard attached. You want to make sure that that is set to on. For whatever reason, Windows has that set to off um, as if they assume that we're going to be able to type with our mind or something like that. I have no idea when there's no keyboard attached, but that's besides the point. You want to make sure that that's set to on. Once you change that setting, you can go ahead and exit out. And after you do that, um, you'll anytime that you bring up some kind of dialog box that needs typing, it will show the keyboard down below. Uh, and as far as the touchscreen, I, I feel your pain. Uh, again, I've logged onto this a number of times and it is, it is a painfully slow process. And I, I, I do apologize for that. Um, you know, the, I, I, again, our goal here was to try to make sure that we were creating a sense of differentiation between the digital student, which is represented by the high flex or touch computer, and then also, uh, you know, not confusing instructors by having two keyboards and two mice on the, on the, on the desktop here. And then also, you know, if you're going to have uh, some kind of instructional tools, you got your sheets out or you have your lesson plan laid out or whatever, uh, all of this extra stuff on here just kind of takes up extra space. So kind of, we're kind of thinking through all of those kind of things, but but yeah, I, I, I hear that hard work and, uh, and, I, and I'm sorry that that, the, that that login is a little bit painful. Luckily though, it's built so that you only have to do that twice, just once to log into the computer and once to log into your conference app. And then from there, you shouldn't have to log in anymore or utilize that touch screen any more than you want to. But, uh, but anyway, I, I appreciate that, it, it, you know, um, you being here and listening and all that kind of stuff, so. <laughs> My rape. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's a bummer. Sorry about that, guys. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut things down and get things closed up. I have a few other tasks to take care of today, but I appreciate all your time again. In a couple of weeks, we'll probably do this again. And then I'm also going to be uh, offering this as a video online. So that way you can go back and uh, kind of take a, like a scroll through it at your leisure and relook at some things again. So uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Thanks again to uh, Ray for being on and for, for, for Luann for being here and, and jumping in and helping out with a, a few questions here and there. But uh, appreciate everybody. Thanks again. Have a great day.